Welcome back students. In this video segment we will cover one section, section 2.5, entitled the unit circle. The unit circle. In this section, um, in this section we will be redefining all six trig functions for the third time. That's the bad news. The good news is it's a good idea that we do this and um, you're not going to notice too much of a difference about uh, in terms of how the, the trig functions behave. All of the identities will still hold true. Uh, there's a great similarity with all three ways that, that we redefine the, the six trig functions. Let's review what we've done so far to sort of get an idea of where we're headed. In section 2.2, which, which is really where the course started. Section 2.1 was just about angles. But in section 2.2, we started in with trigonometry. We, we defined the, the six trigonometric functions. I've listed the first three here. And we do to define the, the six trig functions, we drew a right triangle and labeled the sides A, B, and C with the hypotenuse C. Then we, then we carefully looked at the definitions of the, of the trig functions. The sine was b over c, the cosine is a over c, and the tangent is the length of b over the length of a. Then we looked at a really nice device for memorizing the first three trig functions, that Soka Toa device. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, there you can see in the red vertically. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Then we did a whole lot of work. We looked at the an introduction to the, uh, I think, between 75 and 85 identities or formulas, identities we're going to have for the course. We started looking at a few of those, I think 11 or 12 of them or something like that. Then we started over again. We reinvented the trig functions again and and the per and the reason was because the problem with the definitions as they are is that they're too restricted in the sciences which is why we have trigonometry it is for stem stem field mathematics for the sciences the angle theta needs to be uh, other than acute angle and the definition of the six trig functions as they stood in section 2.2 was that theta had to be acute. So what we did is we put theta in standard position. That means we put it so the theta so that its vertex was at the origin in the xy plane and the initial side was along the positive x-axis. If you recall that's the definition of standard position. And we got rid of the triangle and introduced the concept of the six trigonometric functions being based on the point a b but it still looked like the triangle was hiding there there's really no triangle in the definition in section 2.4 of the the second definition in section 2.4 of the six trig functions there's no triangle but really there's a virtual triangle there's one that we can form uh, most of the time unless the angle is quadrantal we can form that that little triangle that we can use to pick off the sides uh, and and get the, the the definition of the six trig functions again. The the problem was that that uh, one again that that the angle could be quadrantal and then we don't have a triangle formed, and two that a and b could possibly be negative, and so we had to be careful with that. Then we learned a whole lot about uh, computing the values of the six trig functions. That that was Primarily, the, the thrust in section 2.4 was, was after we defined the, the six trig functions again, we figured out how to compute them. And in doing so, I introduced you to the concepts of that, that trig functions of coterminal angles are equal. And specifically, for example, that means the sine of theta plus 2 pi k equals the sine of theta. And if that's not familiar to you, you might want to look back at that video. Theta plus 2k pi uh, represents the set of all angles that are coterminal with theta. And basically, when you add multiples of 2 pi, you get to the same place in the xy plane. You get to coterminal angles, and the trig functions don't change. We also looked at reference angles, and they allowed us to compute the values of trig functions, where uh, this the first idea, the, the idea that trig functions of coterminal angles are equal didn't work. 
when adding or subtracting two pies didn't get us onto the chart of special values. So if that if that discussion or if that review is not familiar to you, then you might want to go back and look at that in that video again. I'm, I'm assuming you've had a chance to look at, at the homework from the last section, so this should be really fresh in your mind. If not, you really should stop the video and go back and do the homework and, for that section. Okay, in any case, we start over again. We take this nice new definition in section 2.4 of the six trig functions that allows theta to be any angle, and we restrict it. We, we create a, a third definition that is more restrictive. Why would we do that? Well, I'll show you in a minute. First of all, what is this third definition? Well, the third definition is really easy to describe. We get this third definition of the six trig function by taking the value of r in section 2.4 and making it and forcing it to be equal to 1. Make r equal to 1 no matter what. And if we do that, then if we let r equal 1, we generate something called the unit circle. When r equals 1 uh, and we let theta twirl around and round and round and go through all real angles, real, real angles and radians, um, we generate a circle. So that point AB can be thought of as a point on the circle of radius 1. The, the term unit means one in in math so the unit circle is a circle of radius one ours is centered at the origin and look what happens to, but look what happens to the definition of the six trig functions the sine is b of theta is b over r but r equals one so sine of theta is just b that's that's one big reason why we have the unit circle it simplifies the definition is of the six trig functions even though we're restricted to a circle of radius one we have a very simple representation of sine it's it we don't have to think soka toa opposite over hypotenuse we just simply say the sine of theta equals b the cosine of theta equals a the tangent theta equals b over a so the tangent of theta doesn't take on any any different appearance okay now i want you to look more carefully about what that means uh, in terms of the, the, the point AB on the unit circle. The sine of theta equals B. Well, B is the, is the Y coordinate of the point on the unit circle that corresponds to theta. So the sine of theta is, is simply the Y coordinate on the unit circle. You don't have to think, you don't have to think opposite over hypotenuse. It's the Y coordinate on the unit circle. The cosine of theta equals a. That's the x coordinate on this circle of radius one on the unit circle. Okay. The tangent doesn't take on any any di apparent difference from before. Tangent is just the y coordinate over the x coordinate on the unit circle. Okay. So here here are all six trig functions then. The sine of theta equals b, the y coordinate on the unit circle. The cosine of theta equals a. And the tangent of theta, x value on the unit circle, the tangent theta equals b over a, the y coordinate over the x coordinate on the unit circle. The cosecant and secant and cotangent also follow. The cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, just like before, never change, that never changes. And the reciprocal of b over 1 is 1 over b. The, the, the secant, rather, is the reciprocal of cosine, 1 over cosine. Cosine is a over 1. The cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle is a over 1. So the secant is 1 over a. And the cotangent doesn't take on any different appearance from uh, its appearance in section 2.2 or 2.4. So the tangent and cotangent don't, don't look any different. Okay, so let's take a look at a huge reason why we consider the unit circle. Okay, before I talk about what I have drawn here, I want to remind you of what's coming up in, for you guys in, uh, in calculus. In calculus, you have to be human calculators. That means you're, you're going to be required to compute the values of the six trig, fun trig functions very quickly on calculus tests without the use of a graphing calculator. You did that in section 2.4. We did that in section 2.4. And it's somewhat involved. Even the even the 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 uh, final 
results of, of section 2.4, namely that trig functions of coterminal angles are equal to handle trig functions of big angles, and and the idea of using reference angles, those those two computational devices are, are handy. And they can be a little slow though. So it would be nice if we had a a way of computing the trig functions even more quickly than by using reference angles or the methods of 2.4. Okay. The unit circle allows us to do that. The unit in, in using the unit circle to do that, we're we're gonna construct something very similar to the chart of special values, which by the way you should have memorized by now. Chart of special values, the values of sine and cosine for the special angles zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, and pi over two. We need to be able to compute the value or yeah, very quickly compute in calculus the values of the of the six trig functions not only for the special angles, but for uh, all the angles within one revolution that have the special angles as their reference angles. If that didn't make sense, it will in a minute. So now let's look at, look at the, what I've got drawn here. Notice up in the, in the upper left-hand corner there, I have a 30-60-90 triangle. Okay. And we remember from geometry that we can construct, always construct a 30, 60, 90 triangle with sides one, two, and radical three. Okay, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to make that hypotenuse on that triangle equal to one, corresponding to the, the radius one on the unit circle. So what I'm gonna do is divide all, each of the, the three sides of that triangle by, by two. Similar triangles from geometry allow me to do that. Okay. Well, two over two, that's one. And I'm gonna I'm gonna then put that angle or that triangle in the on the unit circle. So that the angle 30 degrees is which we're gonna look at in radians is in standard position. So there I've drawn that that 30, 60, 90 triangle using pi over six as the the angle in radians in standard position. And I'm going to put the sides on there. Radical three. Oops, I think I'd like to go back to black here. Radical three over two and one half. So the, the coordinates of the of the point on the unit circle are radical three over two and one half. Okay. So if I memorize that point on the unit circle. This is where we're going with section 2.5, really. This is the heart of 2.5. If I memorize that point on the unit circle, radical 3 over 2 and 1 half, then I could use the fact that the sine of theta is the y coordinate on the unit circle. So the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2, something that we know we know on the chart of special values from, from way back in section 2.3. Okay. Well... To, to make this effective, I need a lot more angles. So what I'm going to do, or what I've done, is I've drawn the unit circle again with all of the special angles in standard position, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. And I've gone all the way around the circle with, with uh, angles that have those angles, uh, pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3 as reference angles. So if that doesn't make sense, here we go. Here's the unit circle again. Unit circle again. Uh, here's the angle pi over 6 from before. But I'm not going to put the angle pi over 6 there, because I'm going to have to draw a lot of angles on this on this unit circle. I'm going to put the angle pi over 6 I'm going to lay it on the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse has a has length one. It's the unit circle. I'm sorry. Yeah, the hy hypotenuse is the radius has length one. But I'm going to put the angle there just to just to remind me where 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 the angle is. And I'm going to remove the angle pi over six there. Now I'm going to put in other angles. I'm going to go all the way around this this uh, unit circle and put in angles. I put in some already. I put in the angle zero pi and two pi. So if that's 1 pi over 6, 
then the, this angle, I'm going to skip one angle, and the next one would be 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3, then 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. These are all the angles and radians that we've looked at before. 4 pi over 6 is 2 pi over 3. You should practice constructing this, by the way. Uh, 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6, which is pi. 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6, which is 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6, 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. 11 pi over 6. And 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. Okay. We also have the, the angle pi over 4. And then pi over 4 plus pi over 4 would be 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, two uh, pi over 2. Then 3 pi over 4 in quadrant 2. Then 4 pi over 4, which is pi. Then 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 doesn't look like a 5. Okay, I'll fix that. 5 pi over 4. 6 pi over 4, which is three pi, reduces to 3 pi over 2. 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4, which reduces to 2 pi. So the first thing in, you do in constructing this computational device, and again, I, I recommend you do this, is you draw all the angle, the special angles in quadrant 1, and then you go all the way around the circle by drawing the rest of the angles that have those three angles as reference angles. Then comes the, I think the hardest part, but even this isn't so bad. We need see all those points, those coordinates that are empty. We need to fill them in. So first of all, the quad, the quadrantal angles. The first point corresponding to zero radians or two pi radians. That's the point one zero. Why is it the point one zero? Because we're on the circle, unit circle. So x is one and y is zero on the x-axis there. Next point is zero one at at the angle pi over two. Remember, we're in the x-y plane. We're in the x-y plane. The point corresponding to pi is negative 1, 0. The point corresponding to 3 pi over 2 has an x-coordinate of 0 and a y-coordinate of negative 1. Okay, now we get to really kind of the hardest part. We have to start with some memorization. Very, very little memorization is necessary to get these points. I flat out memorize rather than rather than having to refer to my drawing above for pi over 6 and the point 1 half and radical 3 over 2 rather than having to derive it by drawing the 30 60 90 triangle etc i memorize that one point i memorize that the the point corresponding to the angle pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2 and 1 half okay now here's the thing we have a lot more points to fill in but they're not difficult the um, the fact is that every point on unit circle corresponding to an angle that has six in the in the denominator has almost the same coordinates, except you might have to introduce a minus sign. What am I talking about? Well, look at the angle five pi over six just before pi. That point is going to have coordinates that have radical three over two and one half in them. But in the second quadrant, the first coordinate is negative. 7 pi over 6, just after pi, is going to have radical 3 over 2 and 1 half. But both coordinates are negative in quadrant 3. Now go all the way, almost all the way around to 11 pi over 6. That point is going to have radical 3 over 2 and 1 half in it. However, in quadrant 4, the first the first coordinate is positive, the second one is negative, so we just make an adjustment. It goes that quickly. All the angles with 3 in the denominator have the same two numbers, radical 3 over 2 and 1 half, but they're rever in reverse order. So I think I'm going to put those in green. I think I'm definitely going to put those in green. So look at pi over 3. Instead of having uh, radical 3 over 2 and 1 half, we have 1 half and radical 3 over 2. That's pretty easy to do. You just memorize 
pi over 6, you memorize that pi over 6 has radical 3 over 2 and 1 half, then radical, or rather pi over 3, just has those coordinates reversed. Now, every other angle with 3 in the denominator is going to have those same two numbers. 1 half and radical 3 over 2. We simply make an adjustment for what quadrant we're in. In quadrant 2, the first coordinate is negative. Negative x value, positive y coordinate. Third quadrant, 4 pi over 3. We're still going to have 1 half and radical 3 over 2, but both coordinates are negative. That's pretty darn simple. Quadrant 4, 5 pi over 3 is going to have 1 half and radical 3 over 2. Just like every angle that has 3 in the denominator is going to have 1 half for an x coordinate and radical 3 over 2 in the y coordinate, but we make an adjustment in quadrant 4. The second, the second coordinate's negative. This goes very quickly. In fact, um, when I studied trig, uh, a billion years ago, <laughs> when I first studied trig in high school, we were introduced to the unit circle first. We didn't. We weren't introduced to the concept of reference angles and that you have in 2.4 or or anything else. We were introduced. This is how we were defined. We were introduced to the trig functions, and it worked for me. I I don't personally. I don't use the chart of special values when I compute trig function values. I use this extended chart of special values, a sort of wheel of special values to compute trig functions. So I start with this. It's your choice. You don't have to use the, this, this uh, big chart, uh, unit circle chart, to compute the trig function. Some students don't. I think a lot of students do, uh, well, or just based on three decades of teaching trig every, almost every single semester. Um, I think students do this, use this a lot. It's 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 a uh, it's a little rough to memorize at first, but if you notice, the, once you get the hang of it, these these numbers go in very very quickly. Now let's take a look at the last the last uh, four points there, corresponding to all the angles that have um, four in the denominator. We flat out I flat out memorize that that uh, we have radical two over two and radical two over two as both coordinates corresponding to pi over four. Then, ev just like before, every angle that has 4 in the denominator is going to have radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2 in it. Second quadrant, however, we make an adjustment. First coordinate's negative. Quadrant 3, both coordinates are negative. Quadrant 4, first coordinate's positive. X goes over in the positive direction. Y is in the negative direction. Every time I started a calculus test, I took a piece of scratch paper myself. I guess I have to do it myself. We didn't have groups. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm very, I'm unique, almost unique in the math department that way. I do where I do a lot of group tests and stuff. Um, so I took a piece of scratch paper and I drew this out. It took me about two minutes. It calmed me down to get started on the, the calculus test, and it allowed me to have a calculator in front of me even though a calculator wasn't allowed this little piece of paper is my cal was my calculator okay okay so moving forward um so how do you use this this wheel of special values how do you use this it's very simple suppose i want some to compute something like the sine of five pi over three there's nothing to do the sine of 5 pi over 3 is the y-coordinate on the unit circle. You, you look up the y-coordinate on the unit circle, corresponds to pi over 3. It's 1 half and radical 3 over 2. The, the, the uh, sine is the y-value on the unit circle. And what about the cotangent of, of 5 pi over 3? Well, the cotangent is not the x or y-value on the unit circle. The cotangent is cosine 5 pi over 3 over the sine. 5 pi over 3. The cosine of 5 pi over 3 is the x value on the unit circle. Remember, the cosine of an angle is the x value on the unit circle. The sine is the y value on the unit circle. The sine is, is negative radical 3 over 2. Okay. The 2's cancel, invert and multiply, you get negative 1 over radical 3. If you want to rationalize the denominator, it becomes radical, negative radical 3 over 3. Okay. So, it's just an alternative 
way of computing the values of the six trig functions. Now, I think you ought to practice with the unit circle. I think you ought to draw that tri that circle that I had drawn before we we had we lectured on this with all the angles and all the points missing and you should practice go round and round and round until you can compute this or or reconstruct this unit circle or chart of you or wheel of special values or whatever um very quickly without making any mistakes check your value check your answers very carefully as you do this if you want to see a a, a, a unit circle completed they're all over the place on the on the on the internet all you have to do is google the unit circle uh, click images the very very first image is a beautiful beautiful beautifully completed unit circle you could also look in wikipedia under the unit circle and there's a nice discussion there so it's eminently available to you so what's the difference between using unit circle and using section 2.4 in, in section 2.4 to compute the sine and cosine of, or cotangent of 5 pi over 3 first you had to start with the, the chart of special values which again should be absolutely memorized by now sine and cosine only contains the sine and cosine and there are the values and then to compute the sine of 5 pi over 3, we used reference angles. The sine of 5 pi over 3 is plus or mi equal to plus or minus the sine of its reference angle, pi over 3. If this isn't familiar to you, you shouldn't be here now. If this isn't familiar to you, you should stop the video and look at the video again on section 2.4. And it probably means that you haven't done homework for section 2.4. You should not do 2.5 without finishing 2.4. You should not do that. You should not be here, okay, unless you've done homework for 2.4. In any case, this is just a quick reminder. So sine of 5 pi over 3 is equal to plus or minus the sine of its reference angle. And 5 pi over 3 lies in quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, using the device all students take calculus, the cosine is positive. Cosine and secant are positive, but we're looking at the sine, so this tells us that we choose the negative, sine of pi over 3. We pick off the sine of pi over 3 from the chart of special values and attach that negative sign. We get negative radical 3 over 2. This works. It works beautifully. It's just slower than, than the unit circle. All I did, had to do with the unit circle was pick off the y value. That's all I had to do. Now there was a cost. The cost was that initial investment of of what's two to five minutes on an exam or whatever, taking a piece of scratch paper and writing out the unit circle. Also, potential cost is screwing it up and making a mistake. You make a mistake on a on a on a point or two, and that mistake is going to compound itself all the way around the unit circle. So when you're if you decide you want to use a unit circle and there's a high probability that you will, based on your trig ancestors in this course. Uh, a lot of students choose to use the unit circle. Make sure, compare your unit circle with this one or the, the Google unit circle on the images. Um, make sure you memorize it correctly. It's very difficult to unmemorize stuff that we've memorized incorrectly. Very difficult for us as humans to do that. So, okay. Um, this is this is the probably the most important part of of section 2.5 was the the wheel of special values. We're still in the section though. There are there are more identities to look at, and the the uh, unit circle allows us to to look at them uh, in a kind of an easy way. We need to look at the six more identities. Remember, I told you there's like 75 to, to 100, 75, 85 or something right in there of, of identities you're going to have memorized for, for calculus. That's a lot of identities. Well, good news. We've gone through a lot of them already. But we have some more. Um, and the unit circle help, helps us memorize them. Now, there are six identities related to the, to the idea that the, the trig functions are periodic. They're periodic. And that's not, a, that's not a difficult thing. It just means periodically they repeat them their, their values. We, we, we saw that last time. Trig functions of coterminal angles are equal. Last time we saw that. The sine of an angle 
is the same thing as the sine of that same angle plus any number of multiples of 2 pi, any number of revolutions you want to add to, to the angle doesn't change the value of, of the trig functions. Now, the smallest value, the smallest angle we can add to a given angle theta and have the, the sine repeat is 2 pi. That would be when k equals 1. That's the smallest angle that you can add to an angle and have the sine function repeat. For that reason, we say that the sine function is periodic. The sine function is periodic. Oof, it's getting really sloppy there. Let me clean it up just a little bit. The sine function is periodic. With a period of 2 pi with period 2 pi. The period of the sine function is 2 pi. 2 pi is the smallest angle that we can add to any angle and get a repetition of the sine function. The bad news? All of the trig functions are periodic. All of the trig functions are periodic. And we have to memorize that. Well, that's easy. But we also have to memorize their periods. The good news, with the exception of tangent and cotangent, the trig functions have a period of 2 pi. All the trig functions, except for tangent and cotangent, have a period of 2 pi. So what do those identities look like? You just saw one. Oops, I don't want to go to red. Let's go to blue. The sine of theta plus 2 pi is equal to the sine of theta. That's an identity. You really already know it. You, saw, you know that trig functions of coterminal angles are equal. You already know it, that identity. You just let k equal 1. Okay. The cosine also has a period of 2 pi. So, it, so sine of theta plus 2 pi equals, or cosine of theta plus 2 pi equals cosine of theta. The secant of 2 pi, oh, sorry, the secant of theta plus 2 pi is equal to the secant of theta. The cosecant of, of theta plus 2 pi is equal to the cosecant of theta. So this is a, these are f uh, ways of looking at formulas to express that idea that all of all of the trig functions, except for tangent and cotangent, so the four of the six trig functions have a period of 2 pi. Those are the, those are the identities that uh, express that. So the sine, the cosine, the secant, and the cosecant, those functions are periodic with a period of, of 2 pi. What about the tangent? It doesn't take a full uh, 2 pi to add to an angle to get the tangent to repeat itself. Check this out. Here's the unit circle again. Here's the, the unit circle again. So here's the angle. Ugh, ugly angle. Here's the angle pi over 4. The angle pi over 4 corresponds to the point radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2, pi over 4. Now, imagine taking and adding pi to pi over 4. Pi over 4 plus pi plus half a revolution. That puts us into quadrant 3. The point in quadrant 3 on the unit circle is negative radical 2 over 2 and negative radical 2 over 2. So the tangent of pi over 4 is sine over cosine, so it's radical 2 over 2, the y value on the unit circle over the x value, radical 2, that's 1. Now look what happens when I add pi. The tangent of pi over 4 
plus pi, not plus 2 pi, just 1 pi. That's the tangent of 5 pi over 4. That's our, that's the angle we're looking at in quadrant 3. That's 5 pi over 4. That's the angle right there. The tangent is sine y value on the unit circle over cosine x value on the unit circle. That's 1 again. I get the same thing as I did in the quadrant one. So if you add pi to an ang to an angle, the tangent repeats. It doesn't take a full two pi for the tangent to repeat. The bottom line is the tangent and cotangent have a period of pi. So all six trig functions, all six trig functions are periodic. Periodically, they repeat themselves. And all of them, except for tangent and cotangent, have a period of 2 pi. The tangent and cotangent have a period of 1 pi. So what that means formula-wise is the tangent of theta just plus 1 pi is equal to the tangent of theta. Okay. Also, the cotangent of 1 pi, I'm sorry, of, of 1 theta plus pi is equal to the cotangent of theta. That's a statement, formula-wise, that the tangent and cotangent have a period of pi. So the how does this help us out? It helps us out in that um, the sine and cosine, to, to compute values of the sine and cosine of large angles, you can remove... 2 pi or add 2 pi that's a statement that the, the that's using the idea that the, that the sine and co and the sine is, is periodic with a, a period of 2 pi but for the tangent you can also do the same thing you could subtract or add multiples of 2 pi but you only have to subtract multiples of 1 pi you don't have to consider adding or subtracting multiples of 2 pi. You could add or subtract multiples of 1 pi. If this doesn't make sense, let's take a look at a couple of examples. How is this used? Example. The cosine, the cosine of negative 37 pi over 4. You got to be able to compute that quickly in calculus. Negative 37 pi over 4. Okay. Well, you can add multiples of 2 pi since the tangent or cosine rather is periodic with a period of 2 pi you could add 2 pi or 2 pi again 4 pi or 2 pi again 6 pi you can add 32 pi over 4 you'll see why I'm adding 32 pi over 4 32 pi over 4 to negative set 37 pi over 4. Ne 32 pi over 4 is nothing more than... Oh yeah, yeah, I'm trying to draw an arrow here and it's not looking very good. 32 pi over 4 is nothing more than 8 pi. 8 pi is 2 pi plus 2 pi plus 2 pi plus 2 pi. You can add the period to the angle, to, uh, which to, period is 2 pi. You can add the period four times. And what that does is it takes us to the cosine of, um, let's see, I don't think, we, we could actually do better, but we'll, we'll do this. Um, negative 5 pi over 4. Because negative 37 pi over 4 plus 32 pi over 4 is negative 5 pi over 4. Well, that was kind of a <laughs> that was kind of a, a, a screw up on my part. I wanted to add enough multiples of 2 pi to, to get something positive. So I'm going to try to make this, this uh, a, a still a good teachable moment. Instead of adding 4 pi's, which is 32 pi over 4, what if I added uh, four two pies. What if I added five two pies? What if I added 40 pi over four? I 
I think that's better. 40 pi over 4. That's the same thing as 10 pi. 40 over 4 is 10. That's the same thing as 2 pi. That's the period of the cosine plus another 2 pi plus another 2 pi plus another 2 pi plus another 2 pi. Okay, well, if I add negative 37 pi over 4 plus, plus 40 pi over 4, oops, we get 3 pi over 4. And on the unit circle, watch your eyes, I'm going to be flipping up here to the unit circle that I have completed. At 3 pi over 4, where the heck did I put that unit circle? Watch your eyes here, sorry. At 3 pi over 4, the cosine is the x value in a unit circle, which is negative radical 2 over 2. I'm going to go back down to our, our, our number. My goodness. Negative radical. Sorry about that. I'm still getting used to this surface. I really apologize. Oh, uh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I could have edited this out, edited this out I guess. Okay, so negative radical 2 over 2. If it isn't clear what we just did, if it isn't clear what we just did, check this out. I think I saved the unit circle. There it is. It's gigantic, of course. There it is. Got a little big. <laughs> okay, so we were looking at the cosine of uh, negative 37 pi over 4. Okay, and what I did was I took the negative 37 pi over 4 and I added a whole bunch of uh, two pies. And why can I do that? I can add as many multiples of the period of a trig function so that the, so, and, and have, and get the, mm, I can add as many multiples of the period of the trig function as I want to the angle or subtract them and not have a change in the value of the trig function. Negative 37 pi over 4 plus 2 pi times 5, 5 revolutions, is negative 37, oops, let's see, I cleaned that up a little bit, negative 37 pi over 4 plus 10 pi, or negative 37 pi over 4 plus, writing 10 pi over 1 with a denominator of 4 is 40 pi over 4, that gives me 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4, that angle I just drew right there, 3 pi over 4 is coterminal with my 37 pi over 4. And I know on the unit circle that the point corresponding to 3 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2 and positive radical 2 over 2. So I simply pick off, since I'm looking for the cosine, I pick off the x value on the unit circle. Okay. Okay, so here's another example. I think this one will go a little better. Suppose I want to compute the tangent of 7 pi over not 4, I'm going to do something other than 4, 6. Tangent of 7 pi over 6. Now this one would have been a little tough in uh, section 2.4. Using section 2.4, I wouldn't be able to use that trig functions of coterminal angles are equal because if you subtracted 2 pi, you'd get something negative. So I, had to use, I would have to use reference angles. Well, the tangent has a period of 1 pi, so I don't need to subtract 2 pi to get a repetition of the tangent. All I need to do 
is subtract 1 pi. The period of the tangent and cotangent is 1 pi. So rather than subtracting a full, peri uh, a full 2 pi, I just subtract 1 period. 7 pi over 6 minus pi is 7 pi over 6 minus 6 pi over 6, which is 1 pi over 6. And on the unit circle, we have 1 pi over 6. On the unit circle, we have 1 pi over 6. Tangent is sine over cosine. On the unit circle, the sine of pi over 6 is the y value of 1. Cosine is radical 3 over 2, the x value. So we get 1 over radical 3. The bottom line here is we don't have to subtract or add a full 2 pi or multiples of 2 pi when we're dealing with tangent and cotangent. Since the tangent and cotangent have a period, they repeat themselves after adding multiples of 1 pi, so tangent and cotangent, we can add or subtract multiples of 1 pi. We could add, add or subtract 1 pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, etc., 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 or 2 pi, 4 pi, etc. Okay, so if, if you got that, then this should be not so bad for you. True or false? True or false? The secant of theta plus or minus uh, plus 2k pi or 2 pi k equals the secant of theta. This is a no brainer. That's absolutely true. This is what we said in the last section. Trig functions of coterminal angles are equal. Okay. How about tangent of theta plus 2 pi k equals tangent theta? True or false? Of course. The same thing holds true for all six trig functions. How about the tangent of theta plus 1 pi k, that is theta plus 1 pi plus 2 pi plus 3 pi plus 4 pi, etc., equals tangent of theta. Of course, the reason for that is the tangent has a period of pi. So while we'll, sti while we'll still get a repetition of the tangent and cotangent if you add 2 pi, multiple of, multiples of 2 pi, you'll get the same repetition. You'll get repetitions by adding multiples of 1 pi secant of theta plus pi k equals secant of theta. False. <clears throat> to get a repetition of all of the trig functions except for tangent and cotangent, you re you're required to add or subtract multiples of 2 pi, 2 pi. Okay, though. All of the trig functions except for tangent and cotangent have a period of 2 pi. The tangent and cotangent have a period of 1 pi. Okay, so let's finish up this, let's finish up this lecture. Okay, so let's finish up this lecture with six more identities. These identities are in the form of what are called even and odd properties. First, let's memorize all six trig functions in like seconds. We can do that. Cosine and secant are even. That's going to be two of the identities. The rest of the trig functions are odd. So if you can remember that, cosine and secant are even. The rest of the trig functions are odd. That's six identities you, you've memorized without even seeing an identity. So what, are they, what does that mean? What does that mean, an even function or an odd function? Let's take a look at... at uh, the idea of an even function. I'm going to draw the unit circle. When I draw it, I'm just going to copy it here if, if my surface will allow me to do it. There it is. There's the, there's the unit circle. And I'm going to use this unit circle to illustrate even and odd properties. Now let's this concentrate on the angle pi over 6. The cosine of pi over 6 is the x value on the unit circle. Just look at it. The x value unit circle is radical 3 over 2. 
Now what I'd like you to take, well actually let's put the angle in there too. Here's an angle in a nice bright red. There's the angle pi over six and the ugliest arrow I've ever written. <laughs> no, I've drawn some pretty ugly arrows. Pi over six. Okay, so now let's consider the cosine of negative pi over six. Well, let me use another arrow here. Let's use, mm, we'll use a nice green arrow for, for negative pi over six. So here's the angle negative pi over six. Oops, kind of got in my way of my angle there. Here's the angle negative pi over six. They're just opposite angles of one another. Negative pi over six and one and pi over six. What's the cosine of negative pi over six? Look at the x value there. The cosine of negative pi over six. It's right there. It's radical three over two. That's interesting. The cosine of negative pi over six is the same thing as the cosine of positive pi over six. This holds true for any of the angles in, in on the unit circle. The cosine of one pi over four is radical two over two. The cosine of negative pi over four is also radical two over two. In fact, it's always true that the cosine of negative theta equals the cosine of positive theta. This is called an even property. Even property. You're going to talk much more about even and odd properties in pre-calculus and in calculus. Uh, but basically, just formula-wise, it means the, the cosine of negative theta equals the cosine of positive theta. So if you want to find the cosine of a negative angle, just get rid of the negative. The cosine and secant, remember I said, were even functions. So this also works for the secant function. Should make sense. Because secant is 1 over cosine. So the, the plus or minus sign of a number doesn't change if you take its reciprocal. Okay. Now the rest of the trig functions are odd. What does that mean? Well, so I can have my unit circle close to me. I'm going to move the computations I did with the cosine down if my surface will allow me to. Thank you, surface. Move them down further. My surface is getting slow. <laughs> okay. Now let's take a look at the sine of pi over, of, of pi over 6 sine of pi over 6 that's the y value on the unit circle and that's one half Let's look at the angle first angle red angle pi over 6 the sine is positive one half y value now let's look at the sine of negative pi over 6 the sine of negative pi over 6 the sine of negative pi over 6 look at negative pi over 6 it's the green angle again the green angle is negative pi over 6. It's also 11 pi over 6, but coterminal with 11 pi over 6. So the sine of, of negative pi over 6, look at the y value there. The sine of negative pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So it's not true that the sine of negative pi over 6 equals the sine of positive pi over 6. But it is true that the sine of negative pi over 6 is the opposite of the sine of positive pi over 6. That is an odd property. The negative sort of factors out. If the negative sort of factors out, then you have what's called an odd property. In fact, this works for any angle. In fact, the sine of negative theta equals the sign the opposite of the sign of positive theta this is called an odd property odd property again you're going to study even and odd properties um, a lot more in a lot more depth than pre-calculus and calculus one okay but an odd property basically allows you to factor uh, the negative out of a function 
and the secant and cosine were the only even ones so the rest of them are odd namely the tangent of negative theta equals the opposite of the tangent of positive theta what's left besides secant and cosine the, the cosecant of negative theta equals the opposite of the cosecant of theta should be one more think of it while I'm squeezing in more room down here one more trig function sine cosine no that's so it's tangent cosecant secant and what else one more cotangent is an odd function so just to just to refresh or remind even properties oops the writing is getting very bad even properties the even functions were cosine and secant so the cosine of negative theta equals the cosine of positive theta on surface let me see more room let's see anytime okay and the secant of negative theta equals the secant of positive theta how would you use this how would you use this we'll use that as our final example here suppose I want to compute the tangent of negative 37 pi over 4 remember you guys have to become human calculators well I could add a bunch of pi multiples of pi because the tangent has a period of 1 pi or I could get rid of the negative right away you remember tangent is odd the only even even functions are cos trig functions are cosine and secant tangent is odd and that means that the negative factors out that's pretty nice got rid of the negative now use the fact that the tangent is has a period of 1 pi take away a bunch of 1 pi's take away 36 pi over 4 what is 36 pi over 4? 36 pi over 4, what does it reduce to? What's 30, 4 goes into 36 9 times. That's 9 pi's. I don't have to subtract multiples of 2 pi. I can subtract multiples of 1 pi. In fact, I'm subtracting 9 1 pi's. So this is minus tangent of 37 minus 36 is 1. And you probably have the tangent of pi over 4 memorized. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So the tangent of negative 37 pi over 4 is negative 1. You could have done this using section 2.4 2 in reference angles. Um, there are multiple ways of, of computing the values of the trig functions. You pick what's good for you. Okay. But we do need to memorize the identity. So the even properties, odd properties, and periodic properties of the trig functions. And what that does, it brings us to the end of our section, section 7.5. Uh, no, 7.5, my goodness, 2.5. I don't know why I said 7.5. Um, go ahead and dig into homework for this section. And as usual, as always, I am looking forward to talking with you all again soon.